Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Sports Extra. I'm your host Ahmed Nawaz with the latest roundup of sports today. Let's take a look at what we're discussing. First of all, Pakistan is all set to take on England on the 22nd in the first T20 international, the four match series. The team has been training extensively. The great news is that the head coach Gary Kirsten has also joined the team and there's been a lot of talk between this think tank that Pakistan team management possesses as well. And uh, a lot of uh, players have made certain statements as well, including Fakhar Zaman, Mohammad Rizwan, Shahin Shah Afridi as well. And, you know, the synergy that uh, Gary Kirsten is trying to bring into the side as well and also inspire them. Of course, uh, Kirsten does carry a reputation of a coach who has been there, who knows what it's like to win ICC tournaments, not just uh, a particular series as well. So I think the real focus is certainly going to be there. And then Pakistan's T20 World Cup squad as well, because this becomes the final frontier after these four T20s, the team heads to the United States of America and of course then the West Indies subsequently to play their T20 World Cup campaign. So we'll talk about this in detail. Then we move on to women's cricket. The women's team is also in England after being thrashed 3-0 in the T20 International Series. Now uh, they're looking forward to the one International Series and a side game uh, was also underway. They uh, took part in that side game as well. 13 players from the squad taking part. Uh, but uh, obviously it's important now that they step onto the ODI Series. I understand that, you know, uh, results... Uh, more or less shouldn't matter but uh, then again if you're into that phase where you want to uh, probably promote your bench strength give them some game time uh, then I think uh, you need to uh, strictly focus on that don't mix uh, these situations up uh, although if you look at the T20 series I was a bit skeptical of the selection of the playing 11 that they went with uh, especially the squad itself there's a lot to be said I think uh, the West Indies series and now the England series after this, there needs to be certain elements of this women's cricket team that really need to be discussed upon. So we'll talk a bit about that as well. Then we move on and we discuss more things from the world of sports and we tell you that Pakistani mountaineer Sirbaz Khan has uh, reached the summit of Mount Everest and, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm very lucky and, uh, that I had the honor to host Sarbaz several times. I uh, had a very decent chat with him on multiple occasions. Understood what the vision is, what he wants to do. And I think uh, a great ambassador for Pakistan and the mountaineering community that we've got throughout the globe. Uh, he's now become the first Pakistani to scale 10 of world's 14 highest peaks. Uh, he has also become the first Pakistani to summit Mount Lodse in 2019, world's fourth highest mountain in Nepal, without the use of supplementary oxygen. And, you know, that 14 number is very, very important because that record is something that Sarbaz has been eyeing and he's gotten, I think, uh, a lot of uh, uh, trek, if you want to call it, or a lot of ups and downs, as you can, but a, lo a lot of things have been there. But I think the determination when I met him for the very first time and then subsequently while I uh, was, you know, having different interviews with him off the record, there were a lot of uh, conversations as well. I found him to be uh, mentally very strong and very focused on his career. So congratulations to Sirbaz Khan. Uh, people who have been supporting him also deserve the credit. And once again, I think it's uh, terrific news for Pakistan. So I think all of us really need to be proud of Sirbaz and celebrate this monumentous occasion as well. Then we move on and we move on to boxing where it was the clash of the heavyweights. We had to talk about this and it ended in spectacular fashion as well. It was a heavyweight boxing extravaganza where Alexander Usyk beat Tyson Fury to become the uh, undisputed champion. Usyk scored a razor-thin split decision over uh, Tyson Fury and it was uh, you know absolutely superb it was one of the fights that everybody was looking forward to and it was a great night for boxing so we'll talk about that as well time now to introduce our guests we continue with our first segment of cricket joining us in studios first of all is first class uh, cricketer and cricket analyst a part of our programs on regular occasions Kashif Majid assalamu alaikum how are you Walaikum salam Ahmed I'm perfectly fine we've also been joined by cricket expert and analyst Sabir Hussain assalamu alaikum Sabir how are you Walaikum assalam Ahmed I'm fine thank you Thank you for joining us. Now, uh, Kashif, the series starts uh, a day to go now. And, uh, you know, I've been hearing a lot of statements from players as well. Even Saim Ayub's statement recently is making it to social media where, uh, you know, uh, there has been talk about him being the permanent member of Pakistan's T20 squad. Obviously, everybody's going to eye there. But this England series particularly becomes very, very important. Uh, the defending, uh, you know, former T20 uh, champions, if you want to call it, the, they have everything in their tank, the English side. They've on multiple occasions uh, handled Pakistan as uh, a team would and that is aggressively and the brand of cricket that they're going to be playing because they want to get their combinations together as well. How do you see this series? 
I guess wonderful series to have just before the T20 World Cup, but at a very wrong venue. I wanted this <laughs> series to happen somewhere where pitches will be slow and uh, most likely uh, be equivalent to what we will be facing in Caribbean. So most probably the pitches and the conditions are entirely different, but still uh, we have got a quality cricket uh, coming up with the, the defending champions England there and uh, they know how to win tournaments and they they are you know this is the one of the best sides <coughs> about i still believe uh, the spin factor can uh, be uh, difficult for them to handle in the slow conditions of the caribbean but when it comes to their own backyard they are one of the toughest side to beat with this uh, white ball cricket going on and uh, yes uh, important thing for pakistan is to get their combination right and so does england will be doing this and most probably it's a test for the middle order of the pakistan how to cope up after this right six. we're going to come back to that uh, batting order scenario especially the middle order but right after a short break stay tuned Right, welcome back and uh, I think before the break, uh, as Kashif of course started discussion as well, there are a lot of things in this series would probably head towards the World Cup and what squad and what playing 11, what combinations you're going to try. But Sabir, obviously the most important factor that Pakistan's been debating right now is that batting order. And I think more or less in this series, what we see in this four T20s is probably going to be something that's going to be Pakistan's uh, T20 World Cup playing 11. Yes, Sabir. Yes, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, uh, this will be very important series for both teams, I mean, especially for Engl England, I would say, because uh, obviously they wanted to have, you know, some match practice because most of the their players, I mean, uh, were playing basically IPL. Uh, advantage, I, in the last show, I basically said it, advantage must go to Pakistan because they are having a kind of match practice at, at international level. You know, playing a league is, is, a, is a different th thing, I mean, but playing for your country, you know, you have to, uh, you know, advise, get advice from your captain as well. So it'll be, it will be interesting to see how England basically approaches this particular series. For Pakistan, Pakistan, you know, must, you know, uh, settle their bowling lineup, their batting lineup as well. You, you basically must not try in th this particular series because you had, uh, you know, ample, uh, ample time in New Zealand series, in Ireland series, uh, series as well. If you are basically going with Saima, Saima, you better to go with Saima Ayub and Mohamed Rizwan. And uh, as far as bowling is concerned, I would basically prefer Ahmad Wasim, especially in the pow first power play, because uh, the kind of experience he's having in the Caribbean Premier League, and he has been, you know, the most highest wicket taker as well in a couple of seasons. So he, he's, he, he's basically having, uh, you know, uh, 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 lots of experience as far as, you know, balling in power play is concerned, especially on slow pitches in West Indies. Uh, not sure about USA, you know, um, about America. Obviously, there will be there will be fast, you know, bouncy tricks because of the, uh, you know, Adelaide drop drop in pitches. But in West Indies, I would, you know, love to go along with uh, Mohammed Amir and you know uh, Imad Wasim in the first power play because Shine Shafri, the you know, fair fair enough, he's basically you know getting his form back, picking up you know a couple of crucial wickets, especially in the power play as well. This is what basically we were lacking, you know, a previous series ago because uh, Babar Azam and his company basically wanted to have a couple of wickets, especially in the power play, and then in the middle overs, Shadab Khan is struggling badly. Better to try out Ibrar Ahmed because you have you know uh, given uh, lots of chances to Shadab Khan. And not to put pressure on Shadab Khan to, to, to give him, a, you know, complete four overs. Better to give him a couple of two overs and then you have, you know, mm -hmm. Iftikhar Ahmad as well. This is, this, this is the time Babar Azam basically needs to learn and improve his captaincy. But that's a very tricky uh, subject, Sabir. Uh, I'd like Kashif to comment on Shadab's uh, inclusion or exclusion as well. Because Kashif, the fact is that, you know, a player like Shadab on his given day through fielding, batting or bowling would probably, you know, turn the tide of the match as well. So, would... As a skipper, Babar Azam does, you know, uh, see a conundrum over here that does he then, you know, go with Shadab as be it because like I said, a person like Shadab can win you a match out of nowhere in any department or does he make that brave decision to play Abrar and, you know, hope that he becomes a mystery bowler, somebody that, you know, is being tabled as a mystery bowler since the past one year now. So for me, uh, both of them can play in the final, for my final, mm -hmm. Shadab can be used as a sixth bowling option and Ebrar can be used as the uh, specialist bowler because we have got depth in our batting. We have got the all-rounders who can ball and who can bat well. And with Shadab's presence in the middle order against the spin, he, he can be a very handy customer and he, he, he can use hmm. a long, hand, a long handle also. But, but, I, but I think the batting strength and the bowling strength both need some technical answers, but right after this short break, stay tuned.
And welcome back, Kashif. If you'd like to continue from where you left off regarding Shadab Khan and the possibility of playing a batter or a bowler. So, uh, uh, the, it's very simple for me that can uh, Ibrahim can play as a uh, special spinner along with uh, Imad Imad can bat as well. And with Shadab's present in the middle order, I can that adds to the benefit of the Pakistani team because he can play spin really well. And also uh, with these days, uh, exceptionally uh, good against the fast bowlers. So that can be uh, one factor where the run rate can be uh, upped by the Pakistani team when it comes to the overs number 7 to the 15. So he, he can be a go-to guy uh, in a difficult circumstances, difficult situations alongside uh, Azam Khan who can be used as, uh, as someone who can finish the innings. But uh, I think st I still believe that is horses for courses. I still find uh, Azam versus Iftikhar in the side. If uh, the team has got strength in their pace battery, for my go to guy will be Iftikhar Ahmed to finish off the innings. And if they have, uh, they're good in the spin department, my go to guy will be Azam Khan. So this is where I think we need to uh, find out a balance in the, our batting lineup. Second important thing when we talk about Shadab's presence in the team, that is his agility. You know, very important factor and we have lost potentially lost a world cup due to one of our fielding lapses that is hassan ali's drop catch of matthew wade most probably although they have got a good balance uh, batting lineup australia but that can be one of those factors where hassan dropped matthew wade and that cost us the semi-final and ultimately world cup because at that point of time with our batting with our bowling we are we are, we are thinking that we can beat new zealand quite easily in the final so Shadab's presence means every now and then you'll find one of the best fielder in the hot spots. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about T20, the hot spots start from the very first over. But hypothetically, Kashif, if both Azam and Rizwan play, who are you more comfortable with keeping the wickets in the entire T20 World Cup? Of course, Azam Khan. Mm -hmm. Because there is no use of Azam Khan in the outfield. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rizwan's exceptional fielding performances in the outfield, I still remember to a 2016 Sri Lanka series, mm -hmm. I guess, yes. where he was so exceptional with his fielding that he got uh, a couple of Man of the Match awards. I, I, if I vaguely remember mm -hmm. that. So most probably Rizwan can be a fielder, a go-to fielder in the hot spot so does Shadab Khan and this is very important you know uh, every and now and then in the T20 we see a fielder jumping up and you know uh, stopping that go ball to go by uh, over the fence and uh, they, they convert a six into a couple of runs or take a brilliant catch that one six uh, stopping of one six adds pressure to the batsman uh, again the momentum couldn't shift towards the batsman and that uh, additional good quality catch exceptional catch then adds pressure to the batting side. So these fielders, uh, they, they are placed mm -hmm. on the hotspot, they are very important and they have a significant role to play. Uh, certain uh, news uh, has been circulating, of course, obviously, uh, they are unconfirmed, but you know, more or less, you tend to give them an ear. Uh, one of them, Sabir, because the World Cup is right next to the corner, is that the management, you know, it's a, like I said, unconfirmed, but sources are telling us that the management has given uh, full assurity to Saim Ayub that he's going to be in the World Cup squad. Not just that, I think he's probably going to be in the playing 11 alongside Azam Khan. So I think if your choices are sure, probably by tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, we'll know the World Cup squad as well. Then it's very important, as Kashif also highlighted, that you, uh, you know, in sequence, adjust your playing 11 and each and every one of those players should know their role in the team and what kind of cricket they need to play. Absolutely, you know, I mean, uh the role is very important, you know, to be communicated to each and every, you know, every player. Uh, Iftikhar Ahmed must know what is his role. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, obviously then um, Saim Ayub as well, uh, whether he's a player of two, three balls, five balls, or I mean, he has to basically, you know, uh, accumulate some, some, run, some runs as well. I mean, he has to learn something from Babar Azam because Babar Azam and Mohammed Rizwan basically, you know, uh, batted beautifully, you know, as an as a opening pair. Uh, basically, they have made the highest, you know, uh, runs and as, 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 as an opening pair, you know, I mean, uh, so many centuries partnership, you know, so many 50 partnerships as, as well, more than 3,000 runs as opening pair. Second highest partnership between KL Rahul and Rohit Sharma, 1,800 something runs, I mean. But I mean, th this particular series is very important for, for, for every player because it's better to, you know, get your form before important World Cup, I mean. Yes, there are a couple of matches against USA, Canada, Ireland as well, but you never know, and you know, in World Cup, these basically knows can 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 give you you know a shocker like we still remember in 2000 you know a seven Zimbabwe beat you basically you know Australia and then in 2022 Zimbabwe beat Pakistan as well Ireland basically beat England in 2009 in in in, in, their, in, their, in their home soil so basically you never know you have to you know a player as per your, your potential everybody must know their role as well so I'm basically you know backing Shadab Khan 
because you have seen Australia, they have been, you know, phenomenal side in every format because of their fielding. Uh, you know, I, I can, you know, uh, recall, I mean, most of their matches, they basically won because of their, because of their fielding. So Shada Khan is a man, along with, uh, I, I totally agree with, you know, Akashif Majid, that yes, Mohammad Rizwan could be very useful fielder for Pakistan. Uh, he has been, you know, fielding uh, brilliantly, brilliantly because of his, you know, his, his basically uh, uh, skills. And obviously, he's, he's a fit player in Pakistan. Uh, we still remember, you know, in the series against Sri Lanka in 2015-16. So he was a basically, you know, a best fielder. He was not basically keeping keeping the wickets because at that time they, they, we, we used to have Sarfaraz Ahmad and then Umar Akmal as well. But I mean, th this particular series, uh, I would like to see, you know, uh, Harris Rauf should, you know, should be fit for for this particular series. Uh, should be, you know, playing all the matches as well. For England, uh, they will be basically, you know, hoping to 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 get a, you know, a good form of Jofra Archer. Because he is, he's basically playing some couple of, you know, uh, some side matches as well. Uh, uh, but, I mean, he's basically getting his form back. But at, at, at international level, you need to perform a, against the bigger teams. Uh, they have a, you know, very good opening pair like Josh Butler. He's having a wonderful form. He played uh, some marvelous innings in, in IPL. So, I mean, Indians are not happy, by the way, because most of the, you know, uh, masala is basically gone from IPL because of the English players. I mean, like, likes of, you know, uh, Bastro, Johnny Bastro, Sam Curran as well. Sam Curran is a wonderful all-rounder, as you know. But uh, Buin Ali will be a very important factor for Pakistan. In, uh, you know, in last uh, uh, T20 in, in Leeds, basically, England basically won that particular, you know, uh, T20 uh, match. They made they, they 200 runs. I mean, Buin Ali was the difference. He basically picked up two wickets and important 36 runs. So Pakistan basically needs to, you know, uh, play really well, especially in the in the, in the batting power play and, and then in the bowler, bowling pop, uh, power play as well. Well, I think that that is another uh, conundrum that we need to address as well. Uh, so, uh, Sabir, if I can, you know, I can particularly ask you about your uh, bowling choices. More or less what Pakistan traditionally has gone with. Who's your pick for the bowling options in your playing eleven? Look, I mean, uh, sometimes we have we have to basically, uh, you know, go as per we have been going and Babar Azam, he basically needs to learn something from MS Dhoni because MS Dhoni used to be a very smart leader and that is the reason basically he used to be successful in, 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 in every format after Saurav Ganguly basically he is the man who basically you know uh, uh, took Indian cricket at a high level because of their, their you know their, their captaincy skill he basically uh, you know used to know the, the role of every player and you know I was li listening the interview of you know uh, Dinesh Karthik and a couple of ex Indian, Indian cricketers as well so he was a basically, you know, kind of a, a film director, Bollywood director. He basically <laughs> knows uh, which kind of all-rounder will be playing in this particular series. Like likes of Rohit Sharma used to bowl, you know, Suresh Raina, Yuvraj Singh. So this is the thing basically Babar Azam needs to learn because Iftikhar Ahmed is, uh, could be very useful as far as the right. bowling, bowling options. Right, definitely. But I can assure you, Sabir, we've got bigger actors and, uh, you know, producer directors in this <laughs> Pakistani <laughs> setup of the team as well, I'm sure. Uh, but very quickly, Kashya, final question, uh, your bowling options for the T20 World Cup. Naseem, Shaheen, Amir uh, as the fast bowlers, mm -hmm. Imad, Shadab and Ibrahim the spinners. Mm -hmm. These are the six options I have got and I, I still believe uh, if we are playing a team against a team who can play spin well, I'll drop uh, Ebrar and I'll ask the three fast bowlers to go along uh, with Shadab, Ahmad and most probably Sai Mayub to complete the quota of the overs. So that can, that can be done and uh, for me this is how I'll play, I'll place my bets on these fast bowlers. Well certainly, uh, Kashif and Sabir thank you very much for joining us on Sports Extra. Uh, it's indeed interesting but I think more or less in a couple of days we'll have our answers and we'll be pretty sure of what kind of combinations Pakistan are going to go to. Uh, but like I said uh, in the last week as well, I'm sure that it's going to be the traditional playing 11 that you're used to seeing. I don't see any dramatic changes being made there as well. Now we take your focus to a boxing where it was the clash of the heavyweights. Heavyweight boxing is something that particularly is a personal interest because obviously, you know, you don't have that much heavyweight boxing. You have other divisions who are competing, other weights as well. But when it comes to the heavyweights and especially when it was Usyk versus Fury, it had to be one of the best nights of boxing that we could witness as well. A split decision by the thinnest of margins. We're going to talk all about that. Uh, we've been joined by a fellow anchor and expert, Mr. Asan Haqqani. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, sir? Right. We're just going to try to get him as well. Asan, assalamu alaikum. How are you? Walaikum salam. I'm absolutely fine. How about you, Ahmed? I'm very well. Great to hear from you, buddy. Uh, what would you like to highlight? Like I said that, you know, it's rare now in these times to have heavyweight boxing. But what better way to celebrate it with Usek against Fury? How would you highlight uh, the events of the night? 
I think this was one of the biggest matches of the decade because of the fact that the all the belts were unified. This was the first time in two decades, actually. Last time around, it was in the year 2000 that all the five belts, IBA, IBF, IBO, WBC, and WBA were on the line. And when you talk about Usyk versus Fury, it was in the making since September last year. So we were expecting a, a mighty blow, and that happened to Fury this time around, but he always comes back stronger. So we're expecting Fury. He already has a, a clause which states that he can have a rematch, and they're expecting a rematch in October sometime around. But then again, uh, the promoters were sitting over there. Eddie Hearn was there, Tulki Aral Sheikh. That's the person who was responsible for all the bouts in Saudi Arabia. He was also over there. Uh, along with him were other promoters there, and Anthony Joshua was there, along with Cristiano Ronaldo, sitting in the front row. They were expecting Fury to win this match, and then Anthony Joshua coming up on stage and somehow making another bout, a fancy bout, between the two UK-born red boxers. Uh, that would have been really classy, but then again, didn't happen because of Alexander Usyk. And for me, if you look at the fight critically, it was all done and dusted in the ninth round, Alexander Usyk made sure that he knocks Fury out. But then again, uh, when we talk about the results, it was a little bit different. Uh, two judges in the favor of Usyk, one in the favor of Fury. So we can, we can, we can see a comeback from Fury. And that will be the last point. Well, I'm probably hoping for it as well. But when you talk about uh, uh, the technicalities, like you mentioned as well, very quickly on a final note, I must ask you, because Tyson, you know, Fury started brilliantly. I thought he had the upper hand going into the starting rounds of the game. But like you mentioned as well, that onslaught in that ninth round, I think had it not been for the bell, he was done for all corners. I, that is something that Usyk, you know, probably uh, had the upper advantage in that round, obviously, when you look at uh, that, that round as well. But it was very surprising for me to see Fury had no answer to that onslaught. He was completely gone. Yeah, absolutely. When we talk about Usyk, he was the fitter man on the day. But then again, uh, Fury started off well. Uh, thing is, Usyk has come from the welterweight division. And he was unified welterweight champion as well. Now he's the unified uh, heavyweight champion. have to give credit to Usyk. As he said earlier in his interview, that if size made fights, uh, then the king of the jungle would be the elephant, not the lion. <laughs> Interestingly said, but I think if you look at this boxing, uh, you know, we need to uh, consider the sequence of events uh, since the start of 2024. Like you said that this is probably one of the biggest events of boxing this year. But we know there is one event that, you know, surpasses th them all. And that is that uh, you celebrate your birthday today. So from me, my entire team of Sports Extra, your team as well, obviously you're a part of us, and PTV World in general, we'd like to wish you a very, very happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to see you guys soon, inshallah. We're hoping to have you back and uh, inshallah with good health, prosperity and, uh, you know, the wittiness that you're known for as well. Thank you very much, Asin, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. There, well, there you have it. That was the birthday boy, Mr. Asin Akhani. And uh, uh, very pertinently put, I think, when you talk about this entire game's perspective, but obviously, like Asin said, and I trust his words uh, when, he, when it comes to boxing, if there's going to be a comeback, that's probably going to be the last fights that we see Fury in. But that certainly is going to be very, very interesting for the promoters and for everybody involved in the realm of boxing to see these two heavyweights clash once again. Uh, that's, of course, all we have time for. But before we go, we've got a very, very special report on a monumentous occasion uh, for Pakistan, where Sirbaz Khan has uh, summited Mount Everest. Uh, if you talk about that mission 14, 10 of those 14 peaks have been done. And I think it's a spectacular moment for all of us to celebrate. Congratulations to Sirbaz. We're going to leave you with this report. You take a look at that. But from me and the entire team, it's goodbye for now. Pakistani mountaineer Sirbaz Khan successfully summited Mount Everest, reaching the peak at an elevation of 8,848 meters without the use of supplemental oxygen. This remarkable achievement was part of the Imagine Nepal 2024 Everest expedition team, which included 14 international climbers and 18 Sherpas. The Imagine Nepal 2024 Everest expedition was a well-coordinated effort involving climbers from various countries. 
highlighting the international nature of the endeavor. The team, composed of experienced mountaineers and supported by a group of skilled Sherpas, undertook rigorous training and preparation to tackle the world's highest peak in 2019. He became the first Pakistani to summit Mount Lhotse, the world's forced highest mountain at 8,516 meters in Nepal, without the use of supplementary oxygen. Moreover, he summited the 8,125 meter high Nanga Parbat in 2017, 8,611 meter high K2 in 2018, and Broad Peak, which was a height of 8,163 meters, 2019. He climbed the 8,091 meter high Annapurna Mountain, 8,848 meter high Everest, and 8,035 meter high Gasherbrum II.